for any given molecule, the rate of change in the various branches of evolution appears to be the same, to be uniform, despite its occurrence in different animals and in different environments. A major advantage of this is that these changes now become the ticks of a molecular clock by which we can date the divergence of these species when there is no fossil record to help us out. This uniformity of molecular change is also what we would expect if these changes were neither good nor ill for the beast in which they occurred, that is, if they were neutral. But for biologists who demand that natural selection be thoroughly in charge of all the changes that we see, this freewheeling molecular change is sheer heresy because it substitutes chance for cause and effect. That, however, is the great controversy that swirls around the leading evolutionary heretic, Moto Kimura of Japan. Five years ago, he startled the world's biologists by asserting that it's sheer chance and not natural selection that governs most of the changes that accumulate in living things in the course of evolution. And now, with Tomoko Ota at the National Institute of Genetics in Mishima, an unrepentant Moto Kimura plays the chanciest version of the life game. They do their calculations by the Monte Carlo method, and their computer is the roulette wheel. It throws up random numbers that decide the fate of particular genes in generation after generation of imaginary animals. For Dr. Kimura, it's chance that sanctions the differences in the vital molecules, both between species and within species. He calls the changes neutral, meaning that natural selection neither encourages nor suppresses them, as the orthodox theory of evolution insists it should. In Japan, we admire the car for its courage, and it is a symbol of good fortune and eminence. These strikingly different patterns and colors have been achieved by breeding over some 200 years. But in genetic terms, they are simply a matter of accumulating a few mutations. As between the carp and me, there are many more changes. But the surprising fact is that most of these mutations do nothing to help establish the differences between a human being and a fish. The carp and I both need hemoglobin to do exactly the same job of carrying oxygen around the body. Yet one half of all the chemical units in my hemoglobin molecules are different from the carp's. That unnecessary sort of evolution, and my studies of its rate and pattern, suggest to me that natural selection has had no reason for preferring one variant of the molecule over another. I think chance plays a much greater part in evolution, and natural selection a lesser part, than biologists supposed a few years ago. Dr. Langley and I have proved that for a number of molecules, the changes occur at different relative rates at different times in their history. That molecular clock may keep adequate time over large stretches of time, but those ticks are certainly not accumulating in one monotonous lockstep. Therefore, we don't need a neutral mutation theory to explain uniformity because uniformity doesn't exist.